The assumption that I'd like to challenge today is the notion that children do not need a mother and a father in the household. In fact, my big idea is the opposite. Children do need both parents in the household. They do need a mother and a father. I realize that there are very common instances in which children are not able to experience such a dynamic. But I'm here today to talk to the fathers who are knowingly absent from your children. I want to let you know that it's not too late. I'm addressing the increasing occurrence and apparent normalcy of absent fathers from the household. A 2012 study by Jallo, Trevode, Cooklin, and Wade states that mother and father involvement in play, learning, and other everyday activities is important in the promotion of cognitive and learning development. Several years ago, I was having a conversation with an acquaintance of mine. She shocked me when she told me that a mother could not successfully mother and father her child. We were having this discussion because she was a single mother of a male. In spite of her love and nurture and care of her son, he would not respond positively. In other words, she felt like he needed his father. Before that conversation, I wholeheartedly believed that if the father was absent, a mother could do just as good a job of, of mothering and fathering her son. Well, my perspective began to shift on the first day of my practicum program at a moderate security facility for adolescent boys. On that particular day, there was a boy that was having a meltdown for no apparent reason. It took two men and one woman to contain him. I watched as the woman's calming voice begged him to relax and assured him that he was safe. After some moments, he began to calm down and release the tension as he listened to her soothing voice and under the strength of those men. While that incident validated my friend's assertion it broke my heart. Several months later, this boy uh, left the facility and re-entered into his mother's home. But I knew that she would face some obstacles because his father was absent. And she did not have the tools to raise him in a way that would help his community. My big idea grew several months after the death of Michael Brown, Jr. At that time, I was a case manager at the same facility where I did my practicum. I noticed there was a difference in the way the boys at the facility responded to me versus the way they responded to the male staff at the facility. It went something like this, me. Mr. So-and-so, please pull up your pants, get back in line. Boy, yes ma'am and he would follow my directive. When a male staff interacted with the boy, it went something like this. <clears throat> Mr. So-and-so, pull up your pants, sir. Get back in line. Boy, man, get the bleep out of my face. You ain't my bleeping daddy. Shut the bleep up. You might imagine what would have ensued. Some disrespectful words being volleyed back and forth, sometimes some aggressive behavior. It occurred to me that these boys were totally unaccustomed to male authority and male accountability. When it comes to daughters of, of absent fathers, I've noticed that there is a sense of a lack of self-acceptance. In the population that I serve in my private practice, I've come across women whose fathers have abandoned them and gone to live with other families and raised daughters that did not belong to them. I've often wondered, why would a father do that? How could a father do that? I realize that this problem is multi-layered, but my big idea, I believe that the solution is attainable. I believe that as a community, 
we can facilitate healthier interpersonal relationships between fathers and their children in the same way that interpersonal relationships between mothers and their children are encouraged. We can heal the wounds that have been caused by absent fathers. My father was physically present. However, he was as emotionally absent as an individual could be. He provided my physical needs, just as I believe a lot of the fathers in his generation did. However, as a child, I found myself to be pretty angry and pretty lonely. And I seek the attention of the little boys in my class by picking fights with them. And as, a, as an adolescent, I found myself enamored by a boy that participated in extracurricular sports with me. He laughed, we just hung out, he was kind to me. And to some degree, I feel like being a father to your daughter has these elements where you, you see your daughter for who she is and you affirm her for who she is and, and encourage her to be that girl. When I turned 40, I, well, before I turned 40, I, I asked my father to have a conversation with me. And I wanted to explore some reasons as to why I felt so disconnected from him. He agreed. And he listened as I talked. As I talked, I sobbed. I hurt. I needed some answers, some understanding, a hug. He waited till I was finished. And at the end of what I said, he told me that he felt like I was being dramatic. That um, he knew that he didn't abuse me in any way. And that um, he didn't know what I was talking about. Well, of course he didn't know what I was talking about. He was emotionally absent. When I turned 40, I asked him to um, participate in an interview with me that I would submit to StoryCorps. He agreed, and he um, told me his life story and shared with me some things that I would never forget. He told me about a time when he was in his late teens that he was standing outside of his home in Haiti, and um, a young girl, a little bit older than him, beckoned to him and called out to him to come to talk to him. And this young girl told him that she was his sister. At that moment, he realized that his father lived two houses down the street and did not make any attempts to engage my father or introduce himself as his father to my father. Up until that point, my father had no idea that a father was supposed to be a part of a household. In his mind, it was just his mother and his, and his maternal grandmother. He relied on religious uh, principles to guide him into his manhood, and he valued education and he valued integrity. In my opinion, my father's attempt at fathering was stellar. But in his talk with me, he shared with me that he realized that he did not know how to be a father. How could he have possibly known? His own father was not a father to him. I'd like to invite you to consider some things with me. Imagine being walked into a kitchen and being asked to cook a nutritious meal for some people that you care about. However, you do not have any tools, no utensils, no resources, no food, no menu, nothing. What would you do? How would you feel? What would your options be? Or being a male in the room with a woman whom you care deeply about, and she's in pain, be it physical or emotional, and you can't do anything about it. How would you feel? What would your options be? What would you do? And finally, imagine with me being a woman who experiences heartache after heartbreak as you seek to find the love and security that only your father can provide. Now that we have an idea about the gravity of absent fathers, I'd like to share with you some of my ideas on how to begin to bridge the gap and heal the wounds that absent fathers has created. First of all, one must identify that he or she is suffering 
from the absence of your father. Research has shown that children who have experienced an absent father have had difficulty in adjustment, which, which affects them later on into adulthood. For the fathers out there who have been absent, I'm encouraging you today to seek to reconnect with your child and if possible, reconcile. I understand that there will be intimidating obstacles, but I'm encouraging you to press forward towards the goal of healing the wounds that your child has carried up until this point. Some ideas on reconnection. I'm encouraging you to begin the conversation with your child. Hear your child's heart. Share the pain of any failures that your child may have experienced. Celebrate the successes that your child has experienced. Listen to your child's heart and be there emotionally and physically for your child. Has your father been absent? Seek to understand the reasons for your father's absence. In doing so, I believe you will experience a release of the, the bitterness and resentment that you may have carried up until this point. If you have always had your father, today I challenge you to reach out and mentor somebody who's not been able to bridge the, cap, the gap between themselves and their father due to death, incarceration, or threat of emotional or physical damage. This is a very serious work for us to do, but I believe that this work is doable. I believe that my idea is sensible and I believe it's attainable. So with the help of our higher power and one another, I believe that we can heal the wounds that absent fathers have created and create a community where absent fathers no longer exist. Thank you.